So, Ambessa is the new champion for League of Legends and will be on live servers within a few days. As someone who likes to figure things out before others, I spent a lot of time playing Ambessa on the test server doing exactly that. A while ago, I did miss out on making a video on Aurora due to being on vacation, but I did make a post on Twitter uh, about Malignant's Lich Bane Aurora, which was the only build that actually had a positive win rate from day one and had to immediately be hotfix nerfed. For Smolder, I actually did put out a video and achieved similar effects. I also do the same for TFT as well. With that said, let's talk about Mbessa. I think when her kit was revealed, players were right to complain because honestly, it does just seem very overtuned. I think even with the adjustments made over time, that's still the case, but not for the reasons that people might think based on the videos. Ambassa by design is intended to be a bruiser that was compared to Renekton or Darius, but after playing her myself, I believe she's much closer to being a fighter uh, akin to Aatrox or Riven. Now, in her current PvE state, she has some mechanics that would make her absolutely broken in the hands of pros or skilled players. I'm not sure if those will stay or not. If they were removed, I think that this champion actually wouldn't be that terrible for balance, though I don't think there's any way she can avoid being high elo skewed without serious design changes. So what I'm going to do now is go over everything there is to know about her runes, mechanics, and itemization. But before I do, I would like to suggest that you subscribe to the channel, and if you enjoyed this content, uh, feel free to let me know down in the comments what else you'd like to see. Thank you, and enjoy the video. For runes, Ambessa has a couple decent options. Uh, the primary and secondary, like, I'll treat separately, so we'll talk about that later. In general, I think the best keystones for Ambessa are either Phase Rush or Conqueror, depending on if you're going, like, pure damage or if you're going bruisery as for your, your your shards it'll always be these three i don't think there's a case where you don't take any of these three for phase rush the pro like the problem with phase rush is that the rest of the tree isn't that good on Ambessa, but i think phase rush is good enough for it to be like worth it i think it's slightly better than taking domination with electrocute and then transcendence is the only good uh ruin on the on the sorcery tree so and then scorch is like it's a decent option for poke it's pretty good paired with sudden impact but it's, it's just the worst sudden impact on on Bessa. uh for secondaries uh i'm just looking at the domination tree i think sudden impact and relentless hunter are probably the best things to go and then i, I think i like relentless hunter the best just because it helps get on to like initially get onto your target which is the part that Ambessa struggles with if she doesn't have her ult or flash up uh precision uh you actually have two options i think fleet is also pretty good on Ambessa. uh specifically if you go cyclosword because you can get fleet up more often uh with the a charge passive so fleet can be an option as well but i think in most cases you default to conquer Here it's kind of up to you. Uh, absorb life versus a hard lane. Uh, triumph if it's a pretty easy lane. Uh, triumph is also pretty good because you can dive pretty well. So uh, this will help you do that if you don't need the healing from absorb life. Here, like after testing it myself, I'm pretty sure it's haste just a hundred percent of the time. I tested bloodline to see how much. It would help with like the the bonus healing on her ult passive but i don't I, I think it's just not enough it also takes too long to be good i think like getting 15 haste like pretty easily like i think it's just much more valuable i think lot i basically gets low enough often enough to take last stand uh if you like the other two better, I mean, you can take them. It's This is personal preference. Now, Resolve Secondary is probably... I don't know if it's the best secondary, but it's. I, I think with Precision, it, it complements very good. So, the options here... Conditioning... Like, I think this is kind of all preference, but I'll talk about what is good. I don't think the top tree is good enough. I generally lean towards Second Win and either revitalize or overgrowth so i think second wind just scales well uh and it helps with 
a bit of lane sustain, which Ambesa needs help with. Uh, conditioning is like okay. So is bone plating. I think bone plating is good for early trades, but I don't think you need it on this champion. Like, if you're taking large trades, I think Ambesa is pretty strong in those, so she doesn't need it. I personally just like second wind better than the other two, and then uh, overgrowth and rev revitalize is like a bit of a de debate for me because uh, overgrowth is just generically good with the amount of health that it gives. But uh, I was looking into how revitalize interacts with the healing passive on Ambesa's ultimate, and it turns out that it just works fully because the passive is like just pure healing. Uh, the healed chill power works on it, and the other passive also works on it. So, like, it actually, like, does, like, a non-negligible amount of, like, bonus healing. So, there's actually merit into taking this. In team fights, I'm pretty sure Revitalize is better, whereas for, like, short skirmishes, I think all of our growth is better. So, depending on how you play. Domination, primary. I think Electrocute, like I said, was is worse than Phase Rush. Like, the damage is good and all, but I think the move speed is more important. But the benefit here is that you actually have, like, a really good tree. Sudden Impact is really good on the champion. Eyeball Collection. I mean, it's kind of preference, but I think Eyeball Collection is just generally the best one uh, on non-supports. And then Relentless Hunter, uh, like I said before, I think it helps you get onto targets when you don't have your ults. Ultimate Hunter can help you, but I think this makes you scary... Even when you don't have ult, whereas this just makes you say you're not scary less often, if that makes sense. As for secondary, I mean, you, you, you'll you probably take like one of the other, like precision or resolve, but a third option is to take inspiration. Uh, this champion is not bad with hex flash. Like, because Ambessa's dashes can't go over walls, so you can kind of get away like this can help you gap close uh from like a bush or something when uh they don't expect it and this also kind of pairs well with uh nimbus cloak if you were to go phase rush so like it's an option you uh a push velocity is also pretty good uh if you're going stuff like cycle sword if you're going if you hit your e if you're playing with your team, like, I, I think this is just very good for, like, just being impossible to escape. Because, I mean, Ambessa's thing is that, like, once she's on top of you, it's very hard to escape her. And this makes it, like, pretty much impossible. Alright, so I'm going to quickly go through Ambessa's kit, uh, just in case. Yeah, you, see, you still haven't seen it. So, her passive uh, gives her a dash if she uses an ability so on every ability if you input another command like a movement or an attack onto a target she will dash in that direction uh basically it's Callista dash uh but on her abilities additionally each cast gives her a bonus attack that has b bonus range uh attack speed uh and a you get a little bit of bonus damage and it restores energy. So, obviously, like the main attraction to Ambessa is this passive. So, uh, using my Q, I cast it, but then I move in a certain direction. The way it works, like, again, is like close to passive. So, uh,. You click your ability, and you, you click your location. No or ally will stand in my way. It gives you a little bit more time, I think. I don't know, or maybe Cluster works exactly the same way. I haven't played Cluster in a while, but once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. But additionally, you get the bonus auto, which is marked by the bonus range you get from, like, certain effects, so it's it's pretty nice well you know that you still have stacks because not everyone looks down here so i think that's a pretty nice thing 
But this auto is very important because if you use it, you will get most of your energy back. So you pretty much won't have any energy issues so long as you're able to auto something. It doesn't have to be a champion. It can be anything. Additionally, it has bonus attack speed. So when you weave it, it's like on a, an enemy, you can pretty like it's like you don't have like real auto cancels with your abilities, but the bonus attack speed works close enough, and it's close enough to a reset that you can do something like auto Q auto, and it's faster than just two autos. Like. Now, realistically, you're not going to be in range to auto like, first, anyway. Because one of the things about Ambessa is that she has, like, a dash on every ability, but she has not the best time getting into range to just wail on people. Like, if she has to use her abilities to get into range, that means she doesn't have those abilities to actually hit the target. So generally like she's really strong while she's already on top of the targets but getting to that point means that she her trading ability isn't actually very strong for the most part you're gonna have to play around ult and flash to actually like be able to use like a full combo onto someone otherwise you just gonna have to hope for some lucky mispositioning from the enemy so the way her q works which is her next ability uh, it, it has two casts. The first cast is this Crescent. Uh, and then when you hit a target, it can be anything, you get the second cast, which is like a straight line. So, if you notice, the, it has like a weird hitbox here. So, this works kind of like Darius Q, where the a certain part of it does more damage. Or, okay. So... The outer part of it does normal damage, and the inner part of it does reduced damage. Which is distinct from a lot of other abilities with similar hitboxes, like Darius or Aatrox. The numbers you see here are for the empowered damage. So it's not really empowered. It's, you're just punished for not hitting the sweet spot. Because of that, and, like, I mess with this damage. Like, it, it, these numbers look high, but they are lower than... You'd think because one of the main challenges behind Ambessa is to reliably hit these sweet spots. Like this is a pretty thin like shell. Like considering like you're not always gonna be in range, like your target isn't gonna be standing still. Yeah, so point is this sweet spot's not super easy to hit. And then the second one, there's no sweet spots, but it's bonus stam or it does full damage to the first target hits. And reduce damage to uh, any other enemies. So the main, the main gameplay pattern that you want to look for on Ambessa is to hit those sweet spots on her Q. Her other two abilities don't have such like specifications, so you want to use the dashes that you get from your other abilities to get uh to make, try to make sure you hit the sweet spot for your Q. Otherwise, you're losing out on a lot of damage. In general, the skill order is going to be Q, E, W. But uh, when you unlock the abilities, uh, it doesn't really have to be that way. Uh, it's probably going to be Q first, like always, just because you get two abilities. But uh, it's probably going to be W uh, level 2. So what your W is, it's it's a shield and it does damage. It's like a Scion W, except uh, it has like a little counter mechanic. Or if it blocks damage, it does more. It does fifty percent more damage, and you can also use a, that dash. So that's without the dash, but you can also use that, and you get another dash. Her E is a little spin around. Uh, if you use the dash from your passive, you get a second one. So, but only if you use the dash so i mean you're gonna wa want to use the dash on any variability anyway in most cases 
The other thing that people haven't really talked about is that it has a 99% slow. It decays over one second, but uh, it's very good once you're already on top of the targets to make sure you can stay on top of them. I've seen a lot of people use this as the gap closer, like before they do anything else. Like they E and like W and then that. But you, you really want to have your E when you're already on them so that you can uh, better reduce their chances of escaping. So in early lane, you're, there's a couple things to play around. It's not very easy to hit a full combo onto people. Like if your opponent is remotely skilled, they're not going to let you do that. So there's a couple combos to consider. The first is to use your Q to get a dash and then you to use your second Q uh, as chip damage. This, this is like a level one thing mostly. Uh, when you have other abilities, you can use your other abilities, but dash, and then you dash out. It's a very hit and run. It's easier to hit your Q2 than your Q1, because the Q2 actually has range on it. Uh, if you're ever this close to an enemy, I mean, good for you, but you can use this on a minion and the gap close, and you can then punish with a arguably easier to hit ability. This range is not huge, but it's like, it's much further than your Q is. And you can use the second dash to just escape. If you're fortunate enough to like, get your auto off too, that's pretty good. But you can also use your autos on minions, which I don't have here, but... When you have your other abilities, uh, general combo is a bit easier. So, I think... If you can, uh, depending on what your range is from your enemy, but usually WN is good enough to do anything you want. Your W is the easiest to engage with just because it, it is the least costly uh, to not have damage wise. And the, having the shield, like, since they buffed the duration, because it used to be like really short, but now it's like pretty clear that you want to engage with your W when that is your what you're trying to do. And you can use it to get into range. You can also use Q1, but it is a rather nice ability to have on your enemy. But once you are able to close the gap one way or another... Auto E. Alright, I should turn this off. Oh, I don't need it. Once again. You want to make sure you use your W and your E to ensure sweet spots. So this is to make sure you're the right distance for your Q1 and to make sure that there's nothing blocking your targets for your Q2. Everything is like if you have to step back, it's fine. You can use your E to try to like position around enemy minions and make sure you have something to escape. One of the other reasons I like Taking phase rush is because you can kind of greed a bit more with your dashing and then you just use phase rush to walk out. But otherwise that's kind of your bread and butter. Alternative like if you were to use your other dashes, just like off the bat. Like, you can just use her dashes, but then you run out of energy and you don't have anything to do. It's kind of like an okay escape tool, but it doesn't hop over walls or anything. So, I think I don't know if this is the shortest wall, but it, like, it can't go over any walls. So, these aren't like good dashes. Uh, it's better, like, these are like in combat dashes, kind of, uh, rather than for map traversal. Like I said before, your max order is going to be Q. E W. The reason for this is uh, Q is your most damaging ability, so what points into that? Uh, your E is a, a pretty it's a it's utility ability at first, but once you put points into it, it starts doing damage. Your W has level scaling, and your E has 
uh, 80 ratio scaling on the rank up, so... We see here, uh, you go from 40% to 80%, meaning as you have, like, items, this will scale, like, a lot faster than other abilities. And this just has natural level scaling, if you see from the 85 to 325 onto the base shield, so... Really, it becomes an argument of cooldown, for, like, we're scaling this up. It's not that necessary. Coming. As a result, if you put points into your E second, you then have like a like a actually useful damage ability. But then Ambessa's last ability is R, which is essentially a combination of Yone Ult and Vile Ult. It is pretty. It's a long range skill shot. I guess like it goes pretty far. The way Ambessa's ult works is it hits all enemies and then on the farthest targets, it basically violates them. So, if I were to go through these two. So it only activates on the furthest targets. And it's it's, it's, it's basically a violate. But if you noticed... Ambessa also has some wacky passives onto her ult. She gets free armor pen and she gets free healing on her abilities. Or healing on her damage dealt. This healing has a lifesteal ratio. However, you're not really going to be using that lifesteal ratio apart from Doran's Blade. Uh, it's just not efficient. So your R has a tiny bit of wind up. It's a really fast projectile, but it like has a like a cast time, so you can react to it by flashing or using some kind of thing. It's a bit hard to sidestep, but uh, if you have quick reaction time and like at least like maybe tier two boots, you can probably sidestep it. However, that said, if you do manage to land it as Ambessa, you then are exactly where you want to be. At that point, you can just whale well on them. Just make sure you hit your Q sweet spots. Pull combo would look something like this. Auto. W. Sweet spot. E. Like, I'm not the fastest at it, but generally you're just using your non-restricted abilities to better hit your sweet spots on your Q. So you go directly behind them with your ult. Uh, so because you're too close, use your W to get into sweet spot range. Q1. E, just because, I mean, you can kind of do either Q2 or E, but I like using E for the slow. Uh, helps. So, I mean, obviously, like they're going to be trying to run away probably. So at that point, you would use your E to... Like for the slow, if you can hit your Q2 for free, that's fine. There, okay, there might be cancel shenanigans, however, I am not mechanically sound. So, for starting items, uh, the options you have like I'd say the, the, your options plus maybe call, uh, for the most part, I would lean Doran's Blade because when you hit six. Uh, you get a little bit of, like, the lifesteal from this, uh, gives you a little bit of spell vamp that scales pretty well. Uh, otherwise, Doran Shield in, like, annoying ranged matchup. For your actual items, uh, I think your options depend on what kind of playstyle you're going for. You can go a bruisery or you can go more, like, pure damage. I think, generally, the best items on the champion are... Cyclosword and Eclipse, but I think Cyclosword is just a slightly better version of Eclipse. The reason why I like Cyclosword is because it is super easy to get the Energized proc. The passive that we're looking at is Galvanize, which makes it so that dashes and stealth stack the Energized faster. Uh, this makes it so that when you use your abilities, like, and you get the dash from your passive, you contribute a lot towards your Energized proc. 
So you can pretty easily get two procs. So, and then and this does substantial damage and it slows. Uh, the way you pay, you chain your cyclosword proc with your lacerate slow. They're basically going to be ninety nine percent slowed, like for most of your combo. So, like, and this 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 is going to be without ult. W in. And yeah, you have it again. So you're getting th uh, this proc twice, which is better than any other, like, item proc. Because you're not getting Eclipse twice. Like, that, that, like, that would take too long. So, yeah. The difference between these two items... It's like, like this is, Cycle Sword is just a more damage heavy item than Eclipse. Eclipse is like a, a, bit, a bit more defensive. You have the shield. Uh, but you have less damage because you don't have the lethality. And lethality scales well with the fact that you have free armor pan. You do current health damage. But if you were to do the same combo. Like you're, you're not even close. Like it takes a lot longer. Whereas you can do your cycle sword combo much faster in more sustained necessary lanes uh, where you can't reliably kill your opponents in the full combo. Uh, I think some of this guy is fine. I think like this is pretty good into tanks where you can kind of trade frequently and then when they're lower then you can go in for your, your all in. Like it's obviously a less damaging item than the other two, but uh, it helps you just stay healthy in lane, and it's for it, like it's, it's just a basic it's like staple wizard item. Black Cleaver, I'm not too crazy about it first because a lot of the value scales later into the game when enemies have more armor, uh, when they have more of their tools. It's an option. It gives you the most, the most haste out of the other options, and then, at, like out of your haste options, it is the best uh, item. Go for just generically. And the last we have Bork, which isn't that good on Ambassa. Uh, the main reason you'd buy this would just be into like specifically like Heart Steel champions, like Mundo or like Tom Kench. It just gives you a way to deal with them. Like the item, it, it, like you're just getting it because the item's broken. Versus like health stackers. And if you're not playing against that, you just shouldn't buy that item. For your second item, uh, I would generally lean towards one of the other like good items. Like I'd say, like this core is probably like just the best items you can build on Mbessa. But if you're going like a a burst damage build. Uh, like if you're going lethality, you uh, you have some other options. Uh, I think hubris is personally my favorite next item on lethality because it has haste, and you, I mean you people also don't know what the champion does, so you can stack this pretty often. That's just because of the that's just because it's PV. Yomu's an opportunity. Uh, I think. Opportunity is better in solo lane and Yomus is better in jungle, but I think Lethality and Bessa is better in jungle than it is in solo lane. It's it's hard to get onto people if you miss your ult. If you don't have flash and you don't have ult, you kind of just have to use half your combo to get into range. And by the time you do that, you don't have enough damage to actually kill them. In lane, like you have to hit your ult, whereas from jungle... Like, you can kind of, like, hit them from when they don't expect it. If they're not expecting your... Because it's long range, so you can... You can engage from, like, pretty far. Over this wall pretty easily. Alright, right, this one as well. River, I like this corner. Raptor pit. This little thing here. 
I feel it walking towards the... River. This wall is a little tricky. This is a little too fat, but... If you can just get into the river, get time. And then from here, you can kind of catch them. Third item, or later, this, I mean, the rest of your items are just going to be more of this. Uh, some more situational, some generic. Like, generically, it's probably going to be, like, this. Like, this is going to be your four. Uh, if you're going lethality, you can, you have a couple options. Now, Ravenous Hydra is a little interesting because this item, like, testing it early game, it wasn't that good. But it's got decent stats to the point where you can kind of treat it as a stat stick. The active isn't bad, it's just not necessary because you don't need the Tiamat in lane. You have enough AoE, like... It's not good enough to be a first or second item, but if you want more healing uh, from your ult passive, then I think this is probably the best option for you. And then, okay, this tab I have here are items that are just outclassed by other stuff. Triforce? I don't know. It's just like, oh, it's a weird in-between. So, like, these items. But it's it's just not good enough. Uh, Bloodthirster. It just doesn't give haste. So it's just slightly worse at Ravenous Hydra. Like, it's a good stat stick, but, like, this is just a slightly better stat stick. Because it has haste. And haste is pretty important. And then the active is also pretty nice. It's not very often that you're going to be getting the shield in combat anyway. And then Cyril's Grudge is kind of in the same boat, where I think it's just the worst version of Black Cleaver. The slow isn't that useful either. If you have full take. Like, it's just a little redundant to have Cyril's Grudge. But whereas uh, Black Cleaver and Cycle Sword actually synergize with each other. Navori is interesting like the effect is like not bad early on but like by the time you get to like four-ish items the amount of haste that you can get makes it so that you don't really need the effect anyway and the thing is Novori stats are just kind of useless otherwise like you're just getting it for the passive but like you don't really need it uh profane i think it's just a slightly worse version of hubris just because you don't need the tms so, it's like a little, it's a little bit more damage on the combo, but I kind of like going around, like, I, I like getting the bonus AD from like, let's say your first kill in a fight. That's what's cheaper. And has a better build path. Like, this build path is kind of annoying. Like, this is just such an easy build path. And then, these items just aren't that good when you consider... Ambassador doesn't really have health killing. The items that she buys can have health, but like it's just not needed. And then Ambassador doesn't really like Ambassador isn't a she's not a terrible split pusher, but her kid is like really, really revolved around like group fighting. Uh because like everything is AoE. Everything is just a circle around her AoE, like like she can hit a lot of stuff. Uh Hexplate just isn't really that good on her and then collector is just not a good lethality item if you're not going crit and the crit is not very good on the champion i last thing is boots it's usually just gonna be one of these three it's just up to you which oh i mean this item being terrible is the reason why having haste from other sources is pretty important so hopefully that covers everything you need to know before playing on Bessa. i'm pretty sure she's going to be live on the 6th on wednesday uh, unless something happens. Once again, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.